and I did have some cooked vegan food last night and I can definitely feel it this morning. I do not feel as good at all. Okay, so I'm at a market right now in some tiny little village in Sweden. It's cool because my friend, her mom is trying to make me feel included here because I've been staying at my friend's place by myself now for a few weeks before I moved to my new place in southern Sweden. I did find a place to live, thankfully, so that stress is off of me. But she knows that I've been spending most of my time alone, so she's including me in these little get-togethers and outings that we have. And uh, I just got some amazing apple cider. It was pasteurized, but finding raw apple juice here just isn't possible. But it's really, really, really good. And I picked up a mango at the grocery store as well, so I'm gonna blend some apple juice and mango together because it is the best combination ever. It tastes so delicious. So we're gonna head back to her friend's house now and make some dinner together and just spend the day. I'm trying to learn some Swedish. I'm butchering the language completely. It's a really difficult language. The pronunciation is what I'm having the most trouble with, so. I'm going to practice my Swedish and we'll see what we get up to. I'm back from the market here at uh, my new friend's house that I just met today and I cut up a mango. I have really been enjoying these mangoes here in Sweden. I didn't expect them to be very good to be honest because we get these same types of mangoes. I, they're either like a red mango, green mango, Kent mango. I don't really know the name or the variety again because it's all in Swedish so I don't really know what I'm buying um, and I don't even know where they come from to be honest but they're just really tasty like the texture is really nice. They're not stringy at all. They're sweet. Uh, they don't really have a lot of acidity even if they're not fully ripe and they're actually really cheap I pay like a dollar eighty for these mangoes for like per mango uh, and in the middle of winter in Canada these mangoes would probably be three dollars and fifty cents each so I've been pleasantly surprised by the, the cost of the produce and especially the tropical fruit um, it, it's really reasonably priced and maybe it's because it comes from a shorter distance from somewhere like Spain or Portugal I'm not sure but really really happy with these mangoes I discovered these raisins at the store here in Sweden, or maybe I bought them in Denmark. I <laughs> can't, that's bad. I can't even tell the difference between Danish and Swedish, but either way, they come from Australia and these are the best grapes or raisins I have ever had before. Usually I'm a huge fan of Sultana raisins, 
But these are incredible. I mean, I've eaten <laughs> three quarters of the bag already and it's a decent size. I just can't stop eating them because they're so delicious. We're gonna grind them up. <laughs> oh, it's, yes. It's, it's mm -hmm. These are, I have never tried these before. No, I never haven't. No, yeah. ever, never. Beets. I know, well, I've tried beets, but not no. these candy stripe ones. Yeah. And you're making a dressing for them? Yeah. With uh, mustard. Mustard dressing? S sweet or yeah, oil, vinegar, mustard uh, dressing. Nice. So we've got these candy stripe beets. Yeah. And because then, they're so pretty too. I know, they are so pretty. It's like it's your heart. Yes. <laughs> your heart beat. Your heart beat. I love it. <laughs> and then we're making a big veggie soup here that has carrots and squash. Uh, I believe it's butternut squash onions, garlic, and another type of root called a swede. A swede, right? Okay. Wait, I got it. I'm getting this <laughs> step by step. And zucchini and all that goodness. And then we're also making an arugula and tomato salad. And then some Brussels sprouts as well. And these are, these are beautiful. They're like purple Brussels sprouts. I've never seen those before either. All sorts of new foods I'm being introduced to here in Sweden. One thing that I've learned so far in Swedish culture is that when they have a gathering or you invite someone over to your home, it is 100% centered around food. Everyone eats together. It's so different than anything I've been exposed to before because usually when I hang out with my friends at home or even my family, it's not centered around food at all. Um, and so they actually consider it very rude here if you invite someone over and you don't offer them food. So every time I've gone out with friends or these new people that I'm meeting, it is 100% centered around enjoying food together and not just enjoying food together. It's not like we just go to a restaurant, but actually making the food together and they put a lot of care and effort and love into it. And it's a really nice feeling. I, I'm really enjoying this food-centered culture and everyone is really open to veganism and understands that I don't just want to eat a big cooked meal. So we oftentimes make a big salad and a lot of raw foods to go along with it. And it's just, it's really nice. <laughs> Pepsi's like, I want some of this. <laughs> This is a feast, you guys. The amount of effort and love that everyone puts into the food over here is incredible. And this is all vegan. Start with the Brussels sprouts over here. And they made some homemade garlic bread. We've got hummus. Some raw candy striped beets with dressing. Some dates. Arugula and tomato salad. And then a big veggie soup. This is my view this morning, waking up in a small village in Sweden, having a big glass of fresh squeezed orange juice. So last night I was talking to you guys about how food is so much a part of Swedish culture and how it really brings people together here and I did have some cooked vegan food last night and I can definitely feel it this morning. I do not feel as good at all and I still do include some cooked food in my diet because I never want to go back to the Sea Shepherd ship and feel as sick as I did before and I'm trying to find balance between I don't know, eating cooked on the ship and then coming back to life as a raw vegan, I don't know how to find balance yet and I'm still working on that. And maybe one day I will be able to eat all raw on the ship and I would love to be able to do that. I don't know, maybe I'll be able to make it work. But I know that one thing that helps me after I do eat cooked food, if I ever do, is having something like this, is having fresh squeezed juice the next morning, something that's really light and will give me lots of energy and taste good. It's a good reminder sometimes to eat cooked food and then come back to eating raw so that I remember how good I really feel eating this way and why I choose to live this lifestyle. Because for me, it's not about purity. It's not about some identity that I want to be a raw vegan. So I feel like I have to maintain this lifestyle, but it's because of how it makes me feel. Come on, buddy. <laughs> We're walking on the ice right now. Okay. Vandela, tell us about this. <laughs> what is this called again? Spark. A kick. Because that's what it is, and that's what you do. And now, now you're in for the ride. So okay. get on here. And okay. Oh, what? I have to sit. I'm sitting on the front. Oh, you sit there. oh my god. Okay. Well, what is this, hey, Pepsi? <laughs> He's like, I don't understand. Do I get to go on it?
<laughs> you get it, Pepsi.